We have a very special episode today. I'm going to share with you a conversation I had with Jonah Keegan. I was scrolling through TikTok one day. I saw this song called Broken, where he played half the song and he invited people to play the other half. Kind of an open source, co-write, co-sing this song with me. Started out as just an idea. It's been shared by thousands and thousands of people. He has over 5,000 duets on TikTok, hundreds of thousands of followers, and tens of millions of views. And you're going to know why after you listen to this interview. Thank you for all your likes and shares and comments. And I hope you enjoy this. What I really needed was to recreate myself, which means to bring something new into the world that has never existed before. What's up? Yeah, how's it going? How are you, man? Great. How are you doing? Thank you so much for uh, uh, do this with you. It's so awesome, dude. Uh, you, uh, you've done well, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I I, uh, I I listened to your TED talk and watched the kind of followed your story and things like that and looked into all the stuff you're doing. It's absolutely incredible, and it, it's it's really, I think it's really fitting. Um, for, for everything that I'm kind of working through with all of this. It makes sense. And I, I think it's awesome. So did you, uh, you know, that's obviously why I connected to your song, right? You know, that's, that's, uh, makes that sense. It me. makes total sense. Yeah. That was me, man. I was like, Holy shit. I was like, that was me. Like that song spoke to me. And, and, and a lot of people I know that, that, uh, you know, that, that have that, that, uh, that journey they're going through. Yeah. You get it. Well, thank you. Out. I mean, it, it means a lot. Yeah, obviously, but obviously seeing how much you inspire other people and, and taking that step to, to help other people now is huge. I, I think it's, it's everything I want to do with my music, you know, so I think seeing that from your perspective is incredible. Tell me, tell me about your, your musical journey. Like, where did you come from, man? You're everywhere now. Sure. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I am. Uh, so I originally was trained as a jazz guitarist. So when I was mm -hmm. little, my grandfather was in a semi-popular jazz band uh, during his kind of uh, during his time. And he played with one of the best jazz guitarists uh, of all time during that period. His name was Danny Gatton. Um, and, and Danny Gatton actually ended up committing suicide when he, he uh, became really started to become really famous and kind of mm. got to his head. Um, but that being said, my grandfather used to show me videos of him and, and of uh, his band and of Danny and things like that when they were playing. And he used to tell me these stories, like uh, he used to tell me how many frets Danny could stretch his fingers. And, you know, I would try to be doing that on the guitar. And he used to tell me all these crazy things and techniques that Danny had. And it just and showed me all these videos and it inspired me when I was really little. So I got into it uh, when I was like six, started taking uh, jazz lessons. Okay. And, um, so I was trained as a jazz guitarist for like eight years, um, studied way more uh, of the technical side of things and kind of more theory based stuff, a lot of jazz theory. And I played in jazz bands growing up. Mm -hmm. Uh, played at some restaurants here and there, you know, but I was always just kind of the little kid who was playing jazz and um, just kind of learning it. And um, I was from Savannah, Georgia, originally, by the way, I forgot. To no mention. kidding. So I was uh, yeah, originally from Savannah. And then um, so once I kind of reached the high school point, I went to a boarding school for soccer. So I had grown up playing soccer mm. and um, I wanted to go to a place that kind of had it was like a sports school type thing, but it was a really mm -hmm. good school called Static St. Mary's in Minnesota. No um, they're really big uh, with hockey. They've got a, a ton of awesome names there, but um, it's kind of like a, a, a college soccer factory as well as people go, you know, people who go there, the ultimate goal is to go play college soccer somewhere most of the time. And so for me, I, I wanted to do that. And so I went up there, I stopped taking uh, the kind of technical jazz lessons and things like that right. when I was home. And um, that was when I, I had gotten into songwriting and things like that before I left, but they sort of like, that was the moment when I stopped taking the jazz lessons was when I started to realize what I really, really love to do. And that was creating and writing and storytelling mm -hmm. and um, kind of the style of guitar and music that, that it, it's revolves around people or it's about emotion and people. Right. To me, that wasn't what music was when I was growing up at first because it was all very technical and it was all very 
theory based and very and you know no discredit to anybody who plays jazz or plays classical music or things like that and i'm sure you know there you can find emotion in anything but for mm -hmm. me the thing that made it important to me was i wanted to do everything i could to to reach people on that kind of emotional level and for me that was acoustic guitar that was an acoustic finger style it was certain i was inspired by certain artists when i was younger andy mckee don ross they're like acoustic finger style guys that i just adored and and they hit me on a level that was just so much deeper than anything i had ever experienced and so i sold all of my electric guitars for this one acoustic that i really, really? like <laughs> Um, sold everything and started writing. Didn't tell anybody in high school for the first like three years, two or three years that I even, nobody even knew that I played anything. Um, and then I had a couple of kind of like pivotal moments, I think while I, when I was in high school that I recognized the power of music. And um, I, I can talk more about those. I'll, I'll keep it um, a little bit briefer now, but uh, a little bit more brief now, but the, uh, they were they basically a, a few moments that showed me really how powerful it was and what could mm. be done with music and i have always said in my my i heard somebody say it once i don't know who it was but i i've stuck with it for a very long time is that music is is a human's closest connection to heaven and i yeah. i i had never resonated with something like that more and um so then i committed to cornell university for soccer um, and went there. Uh, so I'm currently on the soccer team there. That's where I am. I'm a junior right now, uh, going into my second semester junior year. And um, I, when I left for college, I didn't quite know what to do with my music. I didn't really know, you know, it was my passion, I think, above everything else. Mm -hmm. And if it was something I could do with my life, I wanted to, but, uh, you know, I, I, there was no question I would, but, um, I was also very practical. I was going to a good school. I was, I'd worked really hard to be in the position that I was in already. And, um, you know, my parents are, are very practical people also. And we all were mm. kind of just like, no need to, they were supportive. They're always supportive, of course, no matter what I do, but, mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of like, get your degree, you know, keep right. doing, keep doing music, have fun with it. It'll be your thing. And that, that's cool. But you know, you don't want to throw all your eggs into one basket. And so I was, I was like, all right, smart. Um, and then, so my sister, she, she is eight years older than me. So mm -hmm. she, she's married. She's done really, really well. She worked in advertising and she, at the time she worked in social media marketing specifically. Mm -hmm. And so she said, um, she said to me, she was like, you should put yourself, start putting yourself on social media. I was right. like, ah. like, oh, if you want any chance at, at this being your future, you should just do it. Just have fun with it. Plus doesn't matter how many people you reach right now if you can reach anybody with your music that's what it's about right i said yeah All I need is one person you're right so that's i did one. it and it was kind of a, a platform for me to just continue doing that and trying to trying to reach people and then she said you got to get on tiktok this was yeah. maybe a, a year later she said you gotta get right. on TikTok. this was and i was like no nah, come on yeah i feel like everybody goes through like the the, that like brief period with TikTok where you're in denial, where you're just right. like, absolutely not. <laughs> Don't need this app. And then right. at the same time, you find yourself like four hours in just scrolling through the app when it's like four in the morning. But yep. uh, I think I, I, and I was just like, all right, whatever, fine. And I um, put my stuff on there. And I think it was something like six videos in or seven videos in. One of them did really well. And it, it, right. it got something like 100,000 views. And yeah. at the time, obviously, I was like, oh, you know, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, you can't get off the screen when it starts going. And right. Uh, it just keeps it just keeps it just keeps running up like a like a ticker. It, it does. It does. Oh, yeah. And it, it's unreal. It's an incredible feeling. And I just yeah. um, that opened up the first wave of people reaching out to me and saying kind of, first of all, the people that I was I was reaching with my music on a personal mm -hmm. level, on an emotional yeah. level. But then also the people that uh, were from the industry, people from the music industry that were saying, have you considered doing this? Right. And I think that was kind of the slap in the face for me that was like, right. it is possible. It is, it is very much attainable for you to do this. Um, so I kind of 
gunned it hard with the content and and just kept putting things out there that yeah. I was doing, put in every little aspect of things that I was working on. I was, I was throwing it out there and it kept doing well, kept um, kept growing and slowly and some of my like, idols followed me and I was right. just, you know, that, that was the moment where I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this is actually coming together. And so at that point I was like, all right, I have to do this. I have to, there's no way that I, I'm not going to try. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was like, I really wanted to showcase the, the songwriting, which was a part of me that I had kept pretty hidden for a while. Right. Uh, Cause it was something pretty personal, but the, the, I thought that I could, I could reach people more that way and help people. And so I saw the opportunity with the duet feature on yeah. TikTok. And I had seen a lot of people do the kind of, um, you know, finish this song. And it was kind of, you know, think songs that are already out there, like sing mm -hmm. this song with me. And they sing one right, line. Right. And the person duets it and they sing the other line. And I've also seen some people like, you know, rapping back and forth or like write a rap with me, something mm -hmm. like that. That's all playful. And it's, it's incredible. And you find some really, really talented people in doing that. But to me, I saw this opportunity to kind of give a voice to somebody in in whatever situation they were in mm -hmm. and i so i wrote this song kind of setting up someone in any perspective right they didn't i didn't i didn't need this to be something that came back you know I, I didn't envision it being something where all these fantastic singers came along and and did these you know made these although they did but right. i i didn't envision it as that i envisioned it as something for a platform for people to talk and, and express themselves in a way that they might not normally be able to. And I think, you know, now there are something close to 5,000 duets on that. Oh man, I got to well, tell you, 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 you know, you ever see a good book that was translated into 83 languages. I've seen your song at least 200 <laughs> times with 200 different people. And I mean, that's, that's kind of what's interesting to me is it seems like you stumbled upon a new genre of, of, of songwriting. It's like, it's like open source, like help right. me out here, like co-produce this song with me. Is that, I'm very interested because I haven't heard the, the final version of the song, which I think is coming out in a couple of days. Yep. But I mean, for, just to fill in the blanks here for everyone listening, uh, you know, I think this guy came out of nowhere <laughs> and, he, and, he's, and, he, and, he, and he, he wrote lyrics to a song that's called Broken. And then he he sang half of it and let everyone else fill in the blanks and sing with him and it's it's kind of blown up on social. I mean, you you're you know north of three hundred thousand followers out of nowhere. So talk about like the song itself and why yeah. you think people are. And I'm in, I'm interested to see how the how the, the loop ends. I got, I have an unresolved story loop in my head. I don't know how your song ends. Like yeah, how it's going to so, be produced. No, it's a it's a great question. I think that's the question that everybody's wondering right now. Yeah, honestly, right. Is that like. What did you do with it? And in a way, it's, there, there is a lot of pressure, I think, in doing that. And I, I have felt the pressure when I've seen 5,000 different people come along with duets that are all incredible and they all have a very unique perspective. And, you know, I, I want to make sure everybody is heard. Um, and some of them are, are coming from incredible singers as well. But so for me, at the end of the day, what I saw it as was um, the duet gave it the opportunity it, it can i think it presented the opportunity for a few a people in a few different positions and one is the, the my part is the one that's saying that i'm i'm broken right i'm i'm at my lowest point this is a cry for help and i think that opens up for the other person to either be the savior to be mm -hmm. the person in the similar position to be somebody who is um you know it could be a girl a relationship thing it could be a guy a relationship thing it could be uh any sort of you know parental thing, a sibling thing. I saw every single one of those perspectives come out. Even I, I saw somebody did a Star Wars one <laughs> that was like <laughs> it was something about like Anakin and Darth Vader or, or uh, I, I'm not I don't know I, I don't know exactly what it was, but you know people took this in their own way, and which is exactly what I wanted to happen. But right. at the end of the day, what I wanted the song to represent is that first it's the breaking point it's the kind of first step toward the kind of recreation and i i know i i obviously listened to your talk and the kind of and the kintsugi was something that 
I had heard before and that I took into account. I'm, I'm a psychology major, by the way, at, uh, yeah. at Cornell. So at this, Cornell. It's, uh, that was something that, that I was thinking about even in writing this song is the, I didn't want this to be kind of a pit of despair, doom sort of thing. It's mm. more the, the, it's a voice for the person at their lowest, but it's also a, a hopeful voice. It's a cry for help. It's the first time you have actually kind of extended that hand out and you're saying, mm. come me out of this, please. I want to be better. You know, it's time to, and it comes with obviously a sort of self-loathing and just right. like that lowest, lowest point. But um, so at the end of the day, I, I had the option to kind of finish the song with any of these people, you know, and, <laughs> or all of them, right? Or all of them, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, some of the comments on my, on my videos are like, you should make an album with the top 10. I'm like, yeah. you know, that's great. And it's true. There's no top 10. First of all, it's right. like all of right. these have such a powerful message for those people, but I would love to do something like that. And the, mm. the best that I can do is share the duets that I think were most powerful. And, um, and I've been doing that. But so the song that I'm releasing on Friday in two days, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Right. Um, is a, it's just me on it for the first version. So this mm -hmm. very first version is coming out because I wanted that core song that is entirely a cry for help. So start right. to finish, it is that same sort of, I have, I, I haven't set, shown anything. I've been at my lowest. I haven't, I haven't revealed this to anybody because I don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, I'm not friends with my reflection. That's one of the lines that's in mm -hmm. there. There's a, there's a the big section where it's talking about, I don't, I don't deserve your help. I want your help, but I don't deserve your help. It's that feeling of just boom, rock bottom, where you have nowhere else to go. And then I think from there is where I want to. And that's kind of from that kind of rock solid place. I'd like to do re-releases with people with different versions and different kind mm. of resolutions and things like that. But I think more than anything else hearing people resonate with those lyrics and people who are in those that place i really wanted to have that um be what is kind of represented in this song and so that's what it is the the so the it's funny too because i i didn't i wanted to make sure when i was writing my lyrics i didn't steal anybody else's yeah. because some of them were so so good <laughs> I, 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 and i wish i thought of that line beforehand but i heard but, one one guy was was the one I resonated with too? Is it was a father talking to his son? You know, his son was Robert, broken, and his dad was there to help him. That was really good. And I heard a I heard a number of relationship ones, and and some yeah. were it's just me and I need help. Right, and I think um, I don't know. That's just that was why it was so powerful for me. Was just I have the opportunity to not only just put out a and and it was never about I wasn't planning on releasing anything while I was in college. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to get my degree and then, you know, work on it from there. I had seen people do duets, duet me or co-write with me, mm -hmm. things like that, that were just kind of pop songs that were like, you know, talking about that girl next door or something like that. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, music isn't, isn't about um, seeking attention. It's about reaching as, as many people as possible. And yeah. so that's kind of where my pride in, the, the following comes from and with the, the pride in the, the people that are resonating with the song and really wanting it. It's not in look at me and look how great I yeah. am. It's, I feel so lucky that I'm able to, to do this for so many people. And I can't, oh, you, you I can't don't have that. You're very, very gracious, man. You, you taking this good. Um, you're, you're doing a good thing for people. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I, I hope I, so. I interview business people. I never interview musicians. <laughs> like I, I always talk to people about how to make more money and how to, <laughs> how to do better. And, and, you know, the ultimate goal though is, is about creating a transformation. Like the human condition is about a journey from broken to beautiful. Like that's, that's the essence of the song. I think that's why you and I connected because that was my, that was right. the theme of my Ted talk. You know, I was terminally yeah. ill four years ago and now I'm healthy and I'm doing great. And there's, it's, it's a road and it's a journey and I need someone to help you visualize that. And that's what a good song would does. And your song did that for me. I was thinking about, wow, it's like, a, it's so interesting what people think inside themselves when they're in despair and, right. and the hands are all there. Cause you know what I love about TikTok, Jonah, I think you've probably seen this is all the big heavy people that are trying to lose weight and they got hundreds yeah. of thousands of people rooting them on. Like everyone yeah. wants them to win. 
Yeah. Like, you know, like I, when I first heard your song, I was like, man, I want to help that guy. Right. 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 Like, like, I'll help him instantly. I literally, I literally figured out to help you, you know, or, or whoever is broken. You, it puts you in contact with people that you would never be able to put. Of course it has its downsides like any social media does. And mm. especially given that you can go so viral so quickly, but I have, I have seen it firsthand how powerfully positive, positive it can be. And how like, like I've seen those accounts that you're talking about. Anytime I come across something like that, I'm like, you know, you want to blow oh, up the see. comment section immediately. You want to follow, you want to be like, do it, man. You got yeah. it. And um, right. So I, I just, to me, the thing that was most important that I wanted to get across was that you can't have that, that re rebirth, that recreation without the moment of turnaround, without the mm -hmm. moment where you crack, where you fully realize I need to turn this around. And I think the realization, obviously for somebody like you in your position, you know, it, it's death. You're struck with, with the thought of death and with the thought of, um, I, and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of, of other things that went through your mind. That the was time. it. I mean, that was it. It was over. That was it. It was, it was days, you know, it was going to end in a few days. That was it. What do you do now? And you say, all right, well. And you go to regret. That's it. what you go to. I have to, I have to get out of it. And so to me, and even like the, the cover art is the, the hand kind of coming out of the, the mm -hmm. dark. Um, I just thought from start to finish, I wanted this to be something like, and pull me out the fire. To me. That, was, that was the line that I started with, by the way. The, yeah. the, I'm begging you to come pull me out, pull me out of the, the fire. And I, I started with that concept and I kind of wrote it down. I, I, my voice memos are hilarious, by the way. I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I ever want to reveal those, but you know, I'll have something like that will come into my head. And oh, your I, voices. I, yeah, <laughs> Everybody does. On my, on my phone because I, I'll be like on a run or something. Like, I'll, yeah, you got to pull over. Pull me out of the fire, you know, put that in there. <laughs> um, but good. so that's what it started with. And, um, I just realized I had a real opportunity here and, and um, yeah, so now it's kind of, now I'm kind of in it. I'm, I'm fully in it. And it's been a lot of, a lot of work um, for sure. And just kind of managing everything, but mm -hmm. it's what I'm passionate about. And you make things, you make time for the things that you're passionate about. And so I, we're coming up on 30,000 pre-saves on this song, which is. Yeah. Good for you. I, I think we'll get another 20 out of this interview. <laughs> I hope so. That would be. That yeah, would be I'm gonna blast it everywhere because people need to hear this. The number one, number one comment I've ever gotten gotten from what I, what I've done with Ted and anytime I speak is going from broken to beautiful. The kintsugi that you talk about. The you know I have this. I have the actual art here. This broken pottery, and you know the Japanese um, take broken pottery and they mend it. They have an ancient mending process called the kintsugi where they put it back together they put the broken pottery back together as a symbol of of a rejoining and emblazing the the crack in gold not painting over it they emblaze it in gold and it means gold rejoining to join together with gold it, it, your scars become your stars right. and the scratch and the bumps and the bruises you have in your life are the the, the foundation of transformation right and i think your yeah. song says to me what i what i like the most about the kintsugi concept also is that the 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 final product the the refurbished product quote unquote refurbished right is is better it's more glamorous it's it's more glorious yeah. it's, it's special it's more special more valuable than it was before it's yeah it's it's more valuable than the unbroken counterpart like yeah. Right. When I, I found someone who did Kintsugi in the States and I said, I said, she goes, yeah, I, I, it was on Etsy or something. I said, could you send me a broken piece? <laughs> and then she saw my Ted talk. She sent it. She goes, no, please, please. I want to give you that. Cause Kintsugi to her is the beauty of transformation. Right. In fact, as broken as you are, you can literally come back more valuable right. than the unbroken part. Like you're, you weren't as good as you could be with the scars. Like, and uh, Paulo Coelho wrote in, a, in, a, in one of his books that he said, the, the scars are metals that are branded on the flesh. Yeah. And it's I love, I love it, by the way. To your, it, yeah. It's, it's it. like your, your enemies are like, whoa, that guy knows what he's doing. He's been hit and he's still standing. Right. That's what it's all about. Right.
there's the uh, like the the concept also of of being when like in in war being shot in the back versus being shot in the front right that that you know the, the one who was shot in the back was the coward the one who was shot you know i i think right. that's an interesting concept too is the one that has the wounds in front that took it head on and kept going that's the that's the warrior that's the kind of yeah, uh, I'd love to have you sing the song, but I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early. You're going to ruin your. Uh, <laughs> if I was in marketing, uh, I would say, "Don't you dare!" Yeah, <laughs> want to create I, anticipation. As much as, I would, as much as I would love to, uh, to yeah. give a little bit of a preview, I think uh, I've kept it pretty hush hush until this point. You're doing a good job with that, by the way. That's right out of the launch formula. I don't know if you read books, but Jeff Walker <laughs> has a, a book he wrote called "The Launch Formula." And the first thing you do is say, "This amazing thing's coming." <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you how, what it is yet. You got to wait. <laughs> so you created 30 yeah, something yeah. thousand anticipatory uh, waiting and you can, you know, grab another bunch until then. Well, I, I hope it does it justice. You know, I, I, I really do. And I think if anything, it, I'm proud of the writing. I'm proud of the production. I'm proud of, um, mm. I've had worked with some great people and I think, I think it will, again, it's still, I still have the same sentiment, you know, it just because I have a larger audience than I did two years ago when I was happy about 350 followers or when I was just trying to put myself out there, it doesn't mean that I am any less happy with just making one person feel something and, and right. one person. Don't lose that, man. I don't lose I, that. I, I mean, it's important to me, you know, I, I want to make sure that I never do. So I, I'm really excited to show everybody and, um, I hope that it is the kind of message and the, the voice that I want it to be. Yeah. I know it's not what you're looking for, but I don't think you'd be a secret much longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right? Absolutely. Uh, how stuff. do people get a hold of you? How do they, how do they, how do they sure. reach you? Uh, so I have my, my socials. I'm on Instagram at, at Jonah Kagan. Um, same exact thing on TikTok at Jonah Kig, and I post a lot of different videos of my projects that I'm working on and things like that. I also have an email for kind of all of my music contacts and anything anybody wants to reach out to me. It's Jonah Kagan Music at gmail.com. Sweet. And so the uh, I also answer every single one of my DMs on Instagram. It's, it might take me a little bit, but I, I do answer every single one of them. I want to make sure. Good for you, man. I have two things for you yeah. in closing because I wrote my role is mentor, right? Well, right. you know, I mentor people of course. always write your music for one person, right? Try, try to not stop doing that. And number two is you got to finish Cornell. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. That's a, that is a fundamental. I'm going to finish. I am do going not leave school. I don't care what the money <laughs> is. Do not do that. Cause you won't go back. You, you have my word. Don't worry. Awesome, man. You, you're doing a great thing. And uh, thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me on. I think it's it's awesome to be a part of this and, and kind of be a part of your story as well. It's, it's huge for me. So thank you so much. Awesome.